Hi guys, in today's episode of Dr. Nora, I'll be reviewing medical features on the Apple Watch Series 5 and letting you know how it helps to keep you healthy. What's the difference between pizza and a thong? What's the real name of God? Damn, the change is gonna come up. First up, let's look at the heart rate app. The heart, it's beautiful. It sits right in the center of our chest, roughly the size of an adult fist. It pumps up to 60 to 100 beats a minute, makes those beautiful noises, as you can hear from my previous stethoscope video, and it helps to deliver oxygen and take away deoxygenated blood, giving our body and our muscles nutrients to keep us alive and kicking. But where does the heart rate app come into all of this? Well, if we take a look at the back of the Apple Watch Series 5, there is a sensor, and once it's placed over the wrist, it helps to monitor our heart rate and give us a count of how fast our heart rate is going. Straight out of the box, the heart rate app has already got preset defined targets. For example, it'll give you an alert if your heart rate drops below 50 for 10 minutes, and it'll give you an alert if your heart rate goes above 120 beats a minute for over 10 minutes. Now, this is slightly different from its predecessor in that previously, you get an alert if your heart rate dropped below 40 beats per minute for over 10 minutes. Now, in my personal opinion, having a heart rate of 40 is really quite low. And in such cases, some patients may experience symptoms such as dizziness, shortness of breath, palpitations, they may even collapse. So by bumping up that target heart rate, it's a lot better. Now, naturally, of course, your own target heart rate should be individualized, and it's always important to speak to your medical doctor for this, because what might be good for one person may not be good for another. Your heart rate may be altered by medications that you may be taking and also medical problems such as thyroid issues, so always speak to your medical doctor to get your own target heart rate. Okay, so we've individualized our heart rate and we know what our targets are, but what happens if our heart rate falls too low? Well, simply putting it, if our heart is beating too slowly, it's not getting enough oxygen or nutrients around our body. We'll then suffer symptoms such as dizziness, we might get some headaches, we may also feel really tired, short of breath, and we may even collapse. Now, of course, if your heart rate is reading as normal on your Apple Watch, but you're still experiencing those symptoms, it's really important to seek the medical advice from your doctor. And conversely from this, if your heart rate is pumping too fast, it may indicate something called an irregular rhythm, such as a condition known as atrial fibrillation. This is where the heart is pumping erratically and chaotically, and so your heart rate may be up to 170 beats per minute. But why is this important? Why do we care about this? Well, if your heart is pumping really chaotically, then it can produce turbulent blood flow, which can then cause small clots to break off from your arteries, causing conditions such as a heart attack and stroke. This is obviously a very life-threatening situation. And people who may be suffering from a high heart rate may experience symptoms such as dizziness or palpitations, which is where your heart feels like it's fluttering, or you may feel like you're short of breath, or you may even collapse as well. So if you do have any of these symptoms, again, it is super important to speak to your medical doctor to get some further advice. Now, the great thing about the Apple Watch Series 5 is that it does give you an alert if your heart rate has been pumping too quickly over a long period of time. So, from that perspective, I'd say the heart rate app is definitely something to consider. Of course, it can also induce a lot of anxiety. In itself, anxiety or worry can actually raise your heart rate, in which case you may get false readings from your Apple Watch device and it may cause unnecessary stress and anxiety for you. But as always, if you had any symptoms or any concerns, it's always important to see a doctor because having an Apple Watch around your wrist doesn't substitute for seeing a real life doctor. Okay, so that's the heart rate app, but what about the ECG function? Well, ECG stands for electrocardiogram, and that is essentially where we put stickers all over your chest and we take readings of your heart where it looks like lots of scribbles on a piece of paper. And you may have seen this from medical shows like House or Scrubs, where they flatline or they go up in pulses. Now, unfortunately, in Australia, we're not yet privy to the ECG application. And this is simply because Apple as a company haven't yet applied to the Therapeutic Goods Administration to get this certified. And unfortunately, we're not sure if this is gonna happen anytime soon. So for now, we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, great, so what's new with the Apple Watch Series 5? Well, one of the features that I particularly like that is new on the Apple Watch Series 5 is the new noise application. Why do I care about this? Well, how many of you out there have got headphones? Yep, yep, that's pretty much everyone, right? <laughs> and how many of you out there have ever pumped up your headphones to maximum volume? 
Yep, probably quite a large proportion of you. But did you know that you could be at risk of a condition known as noise-induced hearing loss? Now, what this simply means is if you have exposure to loud noises over a period of time, you may end up losing your hearing. Of course, noise surrounds us everywhere. If you walk in the street, you'll hear cars driving past, you'll hear lawnmowers going off, you'll hear dogs barking, and usually this low level of noise, which usually sits around 65 to 75 decibels, doesn't cause any long-term damage to our hearing. However, if we expose ourselves to brief or long-term loud noises, it can have an impact on our hearing, and this can affect all ages. In fact, a recent study in America showed that about 17% of teenagers from the ages of 12 to 19 had features suggestive of noise-induced hearing loss, which is quite worrying. Okay, so let's break this into practical terms. How loud does a noise need to be for it to have an impact on my hearing? Well, practically speaking, listening to noises over 85 decibels can cause long-term hearing problems. Hello, 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 can you? And 85 decibels translates into listening to a motorbike or a dirt bike. But going on from that, when you crank up the volume on your headphones to maximum volume, you're actually going up to 94 to 110 decibels. Yeah. That's food for thought, considering that over 85 is going to cause us hearing damage. Whew, I'm scared. And for example, noises even higher than that, for example, sirens going past on a police car or even going to a concert, you can expose yourself to up to 129 decibels. Ah! And where the Apple Watch does come into play with that is if you have exposed yourself for a period of time with those loud noises, it gives you an alert to say, hey, come out of that situation, you're going to cause some damage to your hearing. And who wants to get damaged hearing? Because ultimately, what can happen is if we have exposure to loud noises over a period of time, we can develop conditions such as tinnitus, which is where we get ringing in our ears, and eventually we may end up with hearing loss as well. All right, hands up if you are gonna go and turn down your headphones right now. Yeah. One of the other new features of the Apple Watch Series 5 is the Menstrual Flow app. Now, of course, this one only really applies to the girls out there, Sorry, boys, but this is particularly useful. Now, as a general practitioner who's got a keen interest in women's health, it is a question that I ask my patients probably 70% of my date, when was your last period? And I kid you not, only about 10% of the girls that I ask will know when the first day of their last period is. The others will say, I don't know, or I can't remember, or they may scramble around in their phone and have a look through their calendar and try and work it out. But it's something that we don't usually think about. Now, a normal period is defined as having a cycle every 21 to 35 days, and it can last up to two to seven days in length. Anything outside of these limits is considered to be irregular. So it is quite important that if you are tracking your periods and you do know to see you've got a bit of an irregular period that you speak to your medical doctor because further investigations may need to take place. Let me give you a few examples where it may be useful to check the trend of your cycles. For example, patients who have got a condition known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is a condition where there are multiple cysts on the ovaries, which are essentially fluid-filled sacs. Now, in this condition, women may experience symptoms such as facial acne, facial hair, and also an excess of weight, which may be difficult to get rid of. But more often than that, they also get irregular periods. Now, these periods may be few and far between. They may even only get three periods per year. It's super important that if you do have these symptoms or if you are suspecting you've got an irregular period, that you track down when your periods are and how long they last for. And then you're able to present it to your doctor and show them the trends so that they do some further investigations to find out what it is that's causing your irregular periods. Another situation where it might be useful to track your periods is if you're going through that dreaded change. Yes, girls, we're all going to go there, unfortunately. And I'm talking about the menopause. So the menopause is defined as having no periods under the age of 49 for two years and no periods over the age of 50 for one year. So if Mother Nature gives you an unexpected surprise visit and says hello, you can show your doctor when your last period was versus your current period and we'll know whether or not that's a normal or an abnormal bleed, prompting some further investigations. There are some other examples where tracking your period may be useful as well. For example, those of you who may be wishing to fall pregnant. Generally speaking, your fertile window is around your ovulation time, which is usually in the mid-cycle. So if you're able to track your periods, you can get an estimate of how long your periods are, and then going halfway between that and seeing when your fertile window is. And of course, conversely, if you don't want to fall pregnant, then you would avoid that fertile window or just use protection. The other great thing about the menstrual flow app is that you're able to track what symptoms you have as well. For example, that could be mood changes, breast tenderness, bloating, or even spotting as well. Now, these are all symptoms that you can bring back to your doctor if you are concerned about any of your symptoms. So, at least next time when you come to the doctor and they ask you when was the last period, you'll be able to whip out your Apple Watch and say, aha, it was the 1st of September. Thank you, Apple Watch, you've made my life a lot easier.
Now, aside from those exciting changes, there are some old friends that have cropped up from last time, and those are the step counter, which I personally like a lot, and also the calories and the kilojoules app as well. Now, obviously for both of these, you do have to input your height, your weight, and your age, and that gives you an accurate target of how many kilojoules or calories you should be burning off per day. The step count or the pedometer is also a really nice feature for those of you who are trying to keep more active and more healthy by doing your 10,000 steps a day. Yes, yes, 10,000 steps. I've said it again and I'll say it again. 10,000 steps, where did that number even come from? Well, we know as doctors that doing 30 minutes of activity at least five days a week when you're getting slightly out of breath, it's great for your cardiovascular health. And if you translate that into steps, it's around six to 7,000 steps. Plus, as a normal day-to-day -day person in your normal life, you may walk around three to 4,000 steps a day. So if you add on those 30 minutes of activity plus your normal lifestyle, that makes about 10,000 steps. So that's a great goal to go for if you are trying to maintain your cardiovascular health. Now, obviously, if you are walking around with a McDonald's in your, your mouth and a milkshake in the other hand whilst you're doing your 10,000 steps, it may not be the most conducive for your health. So use it as a target rather than a be all to end all. One particular feature of the Apple Watch Series 5 that has continued is the falls detection. Now, I find this one is particularly useful in patients who may be epileptic or who may be uh, elderly. I spent a lot of time on a geriatric ward in my younger years on a hospital where about 80% of the patients would come in following a fall and it would usually cause a fracture of their hip, which if you guys don't know, can be fatal. Now. The Apple Watch uses an accelerator and a gyrometer to detect any hard falls. So for example, if a patient who may be epileptic or an elderly person falls on the floor and there's no response received, then it will send off an alert to the emergency services directly. Now this is useful because there are some situations where other fall detection devices just link up to say your emergency contact, whereas the Apple Watch goes directly to the emergency services bypassing your emergency contact who may, for example, be in Spain having a pina colada on the beach. <sighs> Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but at least this way, you get to contact the emergency services directly, providing that quick access and quick care that you'll need. However, in saying that though, as you can see, the screen is fairly small. And for an elderly person, this might be quite fiddly to navigate. Okay, let's get a little bit serious. With any wearable technology or cellular device, there are risks that we need to be aware of. Whilst Apple have claimed that their Apple Watch Series 5 is within normal, safe limits, my advice would be to exercise caution when you're wearing this if you're pregnant or if you're around young children to limit your exposure to radio frequency levels. So would I recommend this device? Well, certainly if you're somebody who's trying to maintain your fitness, trying to keep up your 10,000 steps, making sure you're nice and active, you're limiting your exposure to loud noises and you wanna keep a track on those periods, then this certainly is the way forward. It gives you an opportunity to measure your heart rate, check your calories and your kilojoules that you're burning off, and it even allows you to make phone calls as well. <laughs> what do you guys think? Will you be getting one of these? Let me know in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy. What's the difference between pizza and a thong? What's the real name?